It was Christmas Day. I thought all of the establishments and attractions will be closed as everyone was celebrating the holidays. Good thing I followed my gut instincts. The security guard from the hotel told me that there's a really beautiful island just south of Leyte. He even said it's way better than Boracay. So I went on to find this mysterious paradise island. It was not that hard to find because a lot of locals know the place and they all say the same thing. It's better than Boracay. That got me really interested. They are comparing this island to one of the most popular tourist destinations here in the Philippines. After looking for it, I think for around more or less two hours, I finally found it. At first, I thought no one was there. There were a few vehicles parked, no line waiting to board the boat. Then a guy in a yellow shirt smiled and welcomed me. I then proceeded to ask him if it's possible to get to Kanikawa Island. He said yes. As a matter of fact, one of the boats will be leaving in 45 minutes. To my surprise, I was the only one in the boat. I then asked if we were going to leave with just me on him. And in 5 minutes, a family arrived and got on the boat with me. Around 30 minutes or so, I could already see the island. And all I can say is, wow. After arriving, I then went on to find a place to camp. After 15 minutes, I have pretty much toured the whole island. The trees are noticeably closer to the shore and low-lying rugged rock formations make up most of the beach on this rear part of the island. The sun is setting. The warm colors that it brings is a good break from my monotonous rainy afternoons. As I dig my toes into the white sand to savor this amazing moment, my tummy started to clamor. What a way to break the mood, right? I needed something to eat. I checked my bag for my emergency food and to see what I could cook for dinner. I took out my stove. What I brought during this trip is my BioLite a stove that cooks using wood and generates electricity enough to charge a phone, a power bank, or double-E batteries. Since it runs on wood or biomass, I had to gather twigs for fuel first. Then, I have to break them down into smaller sizes in order to fit them inside the burning chamber of the stove. It looks really high-tech, but there's a learning curve in using it. By the time that I was finished cooking, it's already nighttime. The jampong was good. Food like this become extra tasty when you're hungry and in the middle of nowhere. I was full, I was tired, and I smell like smoke. There's only one logical thing to do, and that is to sleep. I woke up early in hopes to do a time lapse of the sunrise. That was a bit of a failure. Instead of attempting another one, I just decided to walk around. That's when I noticed that the tide was now low, and I can see little critters and corals because the water is just a few inches deep. It was freaking amazing. I can see little fishes, corals, crabs, tiny jellyfish just beside where I'm stepping. The beach was just full of life as far as my eye can see. Then I saw a school of tiny fishes that seemed to amount to hundreds. They looked like they were sifting through the sands to find food. They were incredibly fun to look at, but they were a bit skittish. I wanted to capture a footage of them by placing my GoPro somewhere and direct them towards the camera for them to pass it. I did this a couple of times, then a man called me. He told me that this place is off limits. Why? Well, because it's protected and that I might damage the corals by stepping on them. Instead of being annoyed, I was actually happy. This simple act clearly shows that they take care of their environment and to be honest, I find that quite rare. I politely told him that I will just get my GoPro back and I will come back to the shore. As I went back, I noticed that he was holding a plastic cup. It was filled with clams. I asked him, what is it for? He said, breakfast. There were some sort of weed on top of his clams. At first, I thought, maybe it's just something that came with the clams. I then asked, are those things edible? He said, yes then told me, you can just eat it like that. You can just eat it with the sea. All I said was, awesome. He then told me to try and get some small amount and deep it in the ocean and eat it. So I did. And damn, it was good. I thanked the very generous island guardian and went on to swim some more. One more hour. I packed all of my stuff and went on to where the boat docks. The sun was really shining bright, so I took the opportunity to hang my still damp gear. Then with all my stuff, I got into the boat. It was now packed with tourists. Most families 
all of them are happily exchanging stories of their time on the island. Then we slowly departed. As we move away from the shore, I seem to appreciate the island more. It felt as if it was more beautiful and grand than yesterday. As it disappears on the horizon, I ask myself if the name Paradise was apt for the island. I came to the conclusion that it was.